right, we're talking about unit nine, which is rational functions today. And 9.1 is exploring rational functions using transformations. That's on pages 430 to 445 in your text. Our course outcomes, 30.7, is to extend understanding of transformations to include functions given in equation or graph form in general, including horizontal and vertical translations and horizontal and vertical stretches, stuff that we've done before. Um, 30.11 says we're going to demonstrate understanding of radical and rational functions with restrictions on the domain. Our lesson objectives, there's four of them. First one is to know what a basic rational function looks like when graphed. Two, to find out how to apply transformations to the graph of a rational function. Three, to be able to find some important characteristics of rational functions. And four, to apply rational functions to some real world situations. So in order to find out what the most basic rational function looks like, we're gonna use graphing software. And then we'll then compare that to what happens when we apply a couple of transformations to it. We're gonna look at a vertical shift, a horizontal shift, and a vertical stretch. So if our original function was just plain old f of x, then our new transformed function would look like a times f of x minus h plus k. Remember that a is your vertical stretch, h is your horizontal shift, and k is your vertical shift. We'll also look for a couple of important characteristics of rational functions while we're at it. Our x-intercepts, y-intercept, horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, domain, and range. So we're using a different piece of graphing software today. It's called Desmos.com. It's an online calculator and it works real well. So first thing we're gonna do is just take a look at the most basic of um, rational functions. That's gonna be one divided by X. And as you can see on the left-hand side here, it's the red graph and one divided by X. So you can see that there appears to be a vertical asymptote right at X equals zero. And there appears to be a horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. There are no x or y intercepts, but this is your basic rational function. So when we start applying um, different transformations to this thing, let's see what happens. So if I did um, say three divided by x, so I change that a value. Now it still looks the same way. So this is a vertical stretch. It looks the same way, except that this point here is now further away from the origin, I guess you could say. So the general shape of it's still the same. There's still a horizontal and vertical asymptotes at X and Y equals zero, but it just changes that way. If I change the denominator, so it is now X minus four, notice how the whole graph shifts to the right. So again, three over X looks like that. That's our blue graph. And three over X minus four shifts to the right four units. So now our vertical asymptote is now at x equals four and our horizontal asymptote is still the same it's at um, y equals zero and say i wanted to add a number onto the end of this so we'll say a two if i added a two onto that that has now changed our vertical asymptote oh no our vertical asymptote is still the same it's at four but our horizontal asymptote is now at two so we also now have an x-intercept here. We'll talk about how to find that x-intercept in a second, and we do have a y-intercept as well. We'll have to find those two things algebraically. Um, in terms of the domain, our domain in this case would be everything but four. So you could say that x is um, greater than four and x is less than four. Our range will be everything but two. So you could say y is greater than two and y is less than two. So we're going to find all these characteristics algebraically now, and we're going to do that with an example. It says graph the following function and identify any asymptotes and intercepts. And so our function is y equals 2x plus 2, all divided by x minus 4. And here's the graph that we're going to graph it on. So let's talk about x-intercepts first. Well, we know an x-intercept is where y equals 0. So we're going to make y equals 0, and we're going to solve this equation. Now, the way to solve this equation is we're going to multiply both sides by x minus four. And when we do that, you'll notice that they cancel out on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, it's x minus four times zero. So that also just becomes zero. So really what this is saying is that if you want to find your x-intercepts, we can ignore the bottom altogether. And so we have zero equals two x plus two. We solve for that and we get x equals negative one. So there's our x-intercept at negative one. Our y-intercept, is found by letting x equals zero. So now we have y equals two times zero plus two and zero minus four. And when we do that, we find that we get two over negative four, which is negative two. 
No, it isn't. It's negative a half. So now we have a y-intercept of negative a half. So we know that's where our graph is going to go through these two points. Um, we need to find asymptotes as well. So hopefully you realize that the function on the bottom provides you, or the function, the denominator, provides you with your vertical asymptote. And so when it's x minus 4, we know that x, and this is when we're talking about restrictions and, and things that x cannot be, x cannot equal 4 because then we'd have 0 in the bottom. So that means that our vertical asymptote is at positive 4. So I just draw that with a dotted line. We need to find a horizontal asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote will be um, related to our vertical shift. But right now this function isn't written in the correct way to find out what our vertical shift is. Remember that normally a horizontal asymptote is at x equals 0. Um, but we're going to find out the vertical shift. So we need to do some manipulation. So I'm going to take this function and I'm going to do some algebraic manipulations to the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, subtract 8 and add 8 at the same time. So it's like I'm adding 0 to the top. To the bottom, I am just going to leave it the same. And the reason I'm doing that, you'll see in a second, is so I can take out a greatest common factor of 2 with just the first two terms. And I get 2 times x minus 4. And then 8 plus um, 2 is 10. Now the next thing I'm going to do algebraically is I can take both terms in the top, the 2 times the x minus 4 and the 10, I can divide those both by x minus 4. So I get 2 times x minus 4 divided by x minus 4. And I can do... oh plus, sorry, 10 divided by x minus 4. So what I end up getting, it's a little messy, but these x minus 4s actually cancel each other out. And so what I end up getting is 2 plus 10 over x minus 4. So this just says that our horizontal asymptote is at x equals 2. Because that has been the vertical shift. Now we can finish our graph, we know that it goes to these two points, and we know that it never really touches those two asymptotes, and we know that it's also going to be above if we can remember the, um, the graph of a normal rational function. So we can find our x and y intercepts by letting x equal 0 and y equal 0. We can find our vertical asymptotes by looking at the denominator. And we can find our horizontal asymptote by finding the vertical shift, which is done by manipulating it algebraically. So in summary, rational functions have both horizontal and vertical asymptotes. And these can be found both graphically and algebraically. It's possible for a rational function to have an x-intercept and or a y-intercept, but it doesn't necessarily have to have either, depending on where those vertical and horizontal asymptotes are. And finally, in some real-life situations, they can be described with a rational function. In these cases, a sketch can help you understand them and give you an idea of the steepness of the curve. And I would always refer back to our textbook. There's a couple examples in there using some real-life situations. Um, your assignment is on page 442 to 445. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.